Greetings, Commanders and Soldiers on the front lines of the Thargoid War. This guide is for players who want to build an extremely fast, caustic-resistant ship for the sole purpose of entering Thargoid maelstroms in their current form, where we'll be farming new materials and having several attempts towards the center of the giant caustic clouds. So before we begin, please remember to subscribe and like the video after watching. Your support is deeply appreciated. So to all of you out there who've helped me reach 1,000 subscribers, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Update 14 arrived to Elite Dangerous with an explosion of new content, focused around the second war between humans and Thargoids at a simulated galactic scale. The aliens' invasion efforts were triggered by the arrival of eight Maelstrom Clouds, all positioned strategically as a blockade around human space. Inside these Maelstroms you'll find caustic generators, acting as proximity mines and theorized to be forming the clouds by releasing caustic gas. As you dive deeper, you'll find various interceptors and new materials, all being produced by the colossal megastructures at the center, cloaked in a red fog and releasing a powerful energy pulse upon any near approach. Until we engineer new technology to reach the center, we can only theorize what lies beyond, but as they were given names akin to gods of thunder, I suggest we are looking at titans. Now, if you're like me and the idea of giant alien motherships excites you, no amount of rebuys will stop you from prodding the maelstroms for clues, and to see which attempts can get you closest to the center. While testing the metal, we might as well build a ship that can last for some time with caustic damage, and collect the new mats we find within, as they'll certainly be useful in the near future. The Crate Phantom is light, fast, and can be built as a whole tank for this role. Let's take a look at my Phantom, codenamed Dark Seraph, built using only human technology, and an example of how it's effective with a deep dive into Maelstrom Indra. Beginning with the ship's hard points, I'm simply adding none to stay lightweight and I won't be fighting any Thargoids. But if we choose to add any human weapons, add a couple of enhanced AX missile racks for the purpose of destroying the caustic generators. When destroyed, they'll drop a new grade 3 material called corrosive mechanisms. Remember that when in Maelstrom systems, Guardian technology will slowly degrade until it's rendered useless, so our entire build must be human-made, including any optional weapons, modules, and our core components. The Phantom has four utility slots, so I've used them appropriately for this mission. First, we'll bring an A-class pulse wave analyzer for identifying the caustic generators in the low visibility cloud and to try and peek at the Titans. We want the best A-class analyzer for the max scanner range of 24,000 meters. The added power draw is no issue whatsoever. Next, we'll grab a pre-engineered Sirius heatsink for cooling our ship after using silent running and to stay cold to avoid detection from the generators. The ship will run cold to begin with, but if ever you're in proximity of a caustic generator, pop a heatsink and boost away. Pre-engineered sinks are highly recommended at this point, and you can get them very easily from any serious corporation megaship. The mat cost per module is dirt cheap, and they have the highest heatsink ammo capacity in the game, with a total of 5, meaning you'll have one clip and four additional reloads when you need them the most. Our second half of utility modules are dedicated to our two shutdown field neutralizers, and these are very important, so pay close attention. I've equipped two of them in order to stack the neutralization effect from the Titan's energy pulse. When only using one, your ship will go completely offline during the energy field, and your thrusters will be disabled for roughly 10 seconds. Whereas using two will actually keep your HUD online for the duration, and reduce thruster disability to 5 seconds, allowing you to boost back towards the center much quicker. You can protect yourself sufficiently by setting them both to one fighter group, and then stagger firing them using a technique I'll explain a little later. This will be an important practice as to not drain our system's capacitor before the pulse hits. And with the Phantom's power distributor capabilities in consideration, this is why three shutdown field neutralizers is too many to use. I've tested extensively with three on the Phantom, and unfortunately there's no way to fire them all off without draining your systems completely. Which is why two of them seems to be the lucky number so far, 
those combined with a systems enhanced power distributor and cluster capacitors experimental, which we'll cover in detail very shortly in the next section. Let's talk about the core components of our ship, since these are primarily what the build will be engineering for this role. Beginning with the ship's armor, I'll start by stressing that for 99% of anti-Xeno capable ships, we don't need to worry about the resistances offered by expensive armors, so you want to choose the military grade composites with the enhancements shown on screen right now. However, if we can use any resistance boost within the maelstroms that armor engineering can offer, and pretty much doubling your rebuy cost is not a factor because let's face it, war is money, we want some explosive resistance on our ship in case we're hit by a caustic generator. They seem to deal explosive damage on impact and can damage external modules, so I've gone with reactive surface composite armor with grade 5 heavy duty engineering and deep plating experimental. Max out your heavy duty armor for the needed raw hull points, and deep plating adds even more hull, bringing the total boost to plus 400%, with plus 21.7% explosive resistance. Again, the extra bit of survivability offered by reactive surface composites will increase your rebuy to over 7 million, so go ahead and choose military composites if you're on a budget. We will soon address adding caustic resistance to our ship when we go over the optional internals. For the power plant, I've chosen to undersize it with a size 5A grade 5 armored plant using the Thermal Spread Experimental. The theme of this build is to run cold, primarily to realize the Phantom's name. You want to become a ghost, and invisible to the enemy while doing your Maelstrom Recon. Thermal Spread helps reduce your overall heat, and size 5A is plenty of juice for what we need, while reducing your mass for a speed boost. This brings us directly to an important aspect of our ship build, the thrusters. We want maximum speed to approach the Titans and to boost back against their shutdown fields, so size 6A grade 5 dirty drives with drag drives experimental is the way to go. With the ship's mass in consideration, this Phantom will boost to 580 meters per second on a full tank of fuel, and can hit speeds of well over 600 meters per second while being pushed around inside the storm. As a medium sized ship with hull reinforcements and armor, the Crate Phantom leaves most other build options in its wake. It's extremely fast and agile, and its maneuverability makes it useful inside the turbulent storms of all maelstroms. The Frameshift Drive is a small factor of the build, so I won't spend much time explaining it. Choose the biggest and best size, and engineer it with increased range and mass manager experimental. Range is only relevant if you plan to jump from one maelstrom to another, in which case 30 light years ain't bad. I like to build role specific ships and jump my fleet carrier to each location as needed, but if you don't have that luxury and have some spare materials, consider buying a version 1 5A FSD from a human tech broker. Those are double engineered with increased range and faster boot sequence, so they'll offer you the best jump range in the game possible for all ships with size 5 FSDs. The power distributor is the most important aspect of this build to fully engineer with the following modifications. Size 7A, grade 5 systems focused with cluster capacitors experimental. Let's break it down. Firstly, we'll choose the largest module since the crate offers us size 7. Select class A for the massive boost in distribution power. At base value, a 7A power distributor holds 41 megawatts of systems capacity. Engineer that to grade 5 systems focused and add cluster capacitors, and you're now able to store 70.85 megawatts of energy with all pips to systems. The cluster capacitors experimental will boost your overall power capacity, but at the cost of increased recharge rate. The trade-off is definitely worth it, since you won't be needing a quick recharge anyways. We'll be running this build shieldless, so the entire purpose of storing systems power is so we can efficiently trigger our two shutdown field neutralizers at once. Without engineering, using multiple of these handy tools will immediately drain your capacitor, forcing the neutralizers to recharge before the energy wave even hits your ship. We don't want to be sitting ducks for too long, so put four pips to systems, and when the pulse is released, use your keybind to fire the first neutralizer. 
Using the keybind will automatically fire only one neutralizer, regardless of fire group settings. So immediately after that goes, press your fire group button to shoot the other one off. If you do this correctly, you'll have enough system's capacity to hold both charges when the pulse hits, dramatically reducing spinning, and even keeping your HUD online throughout the short thruster reboot. Is it helpful? Absolutely. Is it necessary? Well, at this point you'll be flying backwards at over a thousand meters a second from the shockwave. So there's not a whole lot to do for the ride, except to clench your cheeks and go weehoo! The last two core modules are also essential, but one more so than the other. Long range your sensors to grade 5 for the best potential visibility inside the maelstroms. Size 6A longer range will give you 12.6 kilometers of range to spot incoming enemies and the mats we want to collect. We'll use our collector limpet to grab caustic shards which are grade 2 and the notoriously rare caustic crystals which are grade 4 mats. Lastly, select a 4D life support module for the reduced mass and lightweight engineer it as high as you can afford. This module should weigh next to nothing and 7 minutes of oxygen is almost too much time, even if you plan on surviving your maelstrom dives. Moving on to our optional internals. This is where we'll be stacking armor with hull reinforcements, because the more armor we have, the longer we'll last. Also seeing as we'll have caustic damage on our ship most of the time, we could do with some resistance to that as well. The best caustic resistances are offered by Guardian hull reinforcements, stacking at 5% each. But seeing as we're only using human tech for the build, this will be the time for meta alloy hull reinforcements to finally shine. Now if you ever unlocked these at a tech broker, you probably looked at their stats and either never bought any, or quickly realized the superiority of their guardian and human engineered counterparts. Well, the maelstroms are the perfect places to put these modules to use, and you'll only need to buy five of them. With 3% caustic resistance stacking on each module, We'll have a total of nearly 15% resistance, which is enough to slow the caustic from eating your hull too quickly. They have a very mediocre hull boost, but the resistance is what we're after, so put a few in the size 5 slots and one in the size 2, leaving your largest module slot for a regular human hull reinforcement. You want to include at least one of these 5D modules, so you can engineer it with grade 5 heavy duty and deep plating, adding a massive 738 hull points to your ship. With our armor, this one engineered reinforcement, and five others made of meta-alloys, we have now completed the build with over 3,000 hull points, 15% caustic resistance, and 32% explosive resistance. We have built ourselves a specialized craft, worthy of awakening a titan, and fast enough to retreat if necessary. To cover our final optionals, I've saved the smaller size 3 slots for our collector limpet and 8 tons of cargo space. Grab a 3B collector limpet, B graded for the increased range, and engineer it with the grade 5 shielded mod. This way you can launch the limpet 1500 meters from your target mat, and be hopeful that it's strong enough with the engineering to survive the storm. 8 tons of cargo is all you will need for the short amount of time spent inside maelstroms, and if your collecting goes well, you'll use all the limpets you brought with you. You're only collecting materials, which don't take cargo space, and thankfully will persist in your inventory past any rebuy screen. Our very last size 1 optional will be fitted with a human module reinforcement, size 1D. This will add slight protection to your neutralizers and limpet controller, although the collector limpet tends to malfunction after just two hits from the Titan's pulse, so try to do your collecting before your dives. Concluding with our build, you may argue that equipping a repair limpet, or even a size 5 decontamination limpet will be better choices for this mission, but after many tests, I've decided to ditch both in place of raw hull points. A repair limpet in sizes 3 and 5 won't repair fast enough to fight the caustic decay, and decontaminating your ship is pointless, since you will literally catch caustic a few seconds later remaining inside the cloud. So, it's better to stack hull boost and caustic resistance in whichever way you can. This ship is certainly not meant to survive each excursion. It's for quick collection and torpedo-style recon of alien territory. We'll be facing an overwhelming amount of Thargoid interdictions trying to get to the maelstroms in the system, but our Phantom can easily submit to the interdiction 
and boost away at high speeds, making its escape. Now that we've completely outlined the build of our Maelstrom Phantom, let's put it to action with a dive into Maelstrom Indra. This should demonstrate collection methods, and why our choices of utility, armor, and speed are crucial for this role. As you can all see, Maelstroms are deeply mysterious at the moment, so using any new methods to gather information is about all we can do, including naming my ship Dark Seraph and the D2 Bobble for fun. Thank you for paying attention, and please, continue watching and hopefully you'll enjoy a thrilling ride. 07 Commanders Hello Commanders, I'm arriving at Maelstrom Indra after several Thargoid hyperdictions and interdictions. Let's try to get inside. Can't beat that ring pneumonia though. Hull integrity compromised. Dropping in, we're going to pulse wave and see if we can find some caustic generators. Yeah, they're all over the place. Instant caustic damage, that's impossible to cook off, so... If you cook it off, it'll just come right back. We're just going to live with it. Putting our 14.1% caustic resistance to use. You can see the hull percentage will drop slowly. Okay, spotted a caustic shard. Let's go pick it up. Thrusting downwards towards Limpet. Unexpired. Go, Limpet, go! Five percent hull and counting. Got one caustic shard. Let's try to get the other one. I'm getting close to the maelstrom center now. Oh, the Titan's gonna release the pulse. Initiated. Oh, we're flying backwards. Oh, there's an angry goid there. and then we'll try to retreat without dying.
Rosa's off. Retreating.